Hi everyone, my name is Nate Sheets with Oregon Behavior Consultation, and in this video we're going to talk about the cognitive skill of planning. Now planning happens in a lot of different ways and in a lot of different situations. So I want us to take a step back and think about what is planning. Planning is one of the executive functioning skills which we talked about in previous videos as having only so much energy to be able to do. And in fact, whenever you use planning, it takes away from any other executive functioning skill you're going to be able to use later on in the day. We call this executive functioning fuel and it's related to spoon theory. We'll put a link to a video where we've already discussed this in the description below. So most planning happens right in our heads. We call that abstract thought. We're using only our mental abilities to manipulate information, make plans, maybe test some hypotheses, or do whatever we do to engage in planning. We already know that people with FASD and many other developmental disabilities struggle with executive functioning skills, and that's exactly what planning is. This means that while for many of us, thinking about pictures and planning in our brain doesn't seem like much of an effort at all, but for somebody who struggles with the skill on a cognitive level, it takes a lot of effort to really think through how we're going to plan something. Planning also involves thinking of what might go right or wrong with a plan or cause and effect. And we know that a lot of people with FASD struggle with this. We often link it to impulsivity, but could also be due to difficulty in making plans. Think about the energy it would take you to try to work out the problem 72 times 61 in your head. Now in normal situations, I would not be able to do this very easily in my head. I could do it easily with a pen and paper, but if I'm taking those tools away and I have to do everything in my head, I start to begin to understand the difficulty in trying to make these plans or to problem solve, all in the abstract. For people with FASD, it's not necessarily going to take a math problem to create that difficulty. You need a lot of focus, you need a lot of energy, and you need to be able to really think about all of your options. And so imagine how often we're in situations with somebody with FASD and we say something that requires their brain to think. Now again, this can happen very accidentally, because for most of us, making a plan in our head is not necessarily a big deal. This might be the reason a lot of the people that we work with struggle to adapt to changes in what they're expecting in the moment as it's happening. Imagine that you're taking your child or the person that you're working with to the store, and you guys are going and you've made a plan to get a specific item that they really want. Well, you show up to the store and the item is not there. They are out of stock. Now, for most of us in this situation, our brains go to work for us almost immediately. If we're annoyed or frustrated at the situations, our emotional regulation kicks in. And beyond that, we're most likely going to begin to think of solutions to our problem, which involves making plans. So right there, in that moment of potential frustration or escalation, our executive functioning skills, which usually drop during those times, can go into play for us so we can make a plan. This is fine if you can refrain from being escalated at a minor trigger. But if you're like a lot of our clients with FASD, the minor trigger of going to the store and not having the item there might lead them to a lot more escalation, which means that those skills that will be required to problem solve will not be there. So even in a situation where for most of us, we can just sit there and come up with a solution easily, it can turn into a bigger escalation because our clients do not have the skills. Now take the information about just a situation that requires planning and ask yourself how many times as you're interacting with your client throughout the day are you requiring their brain to make plans. And remember, we just gave you an example of the difficulty in making plans when we're escalated or frustrated. But remember, for people with FASD, these plans are also difficult when things are going well. So we may actually be contributing to escalation if whatever we're doing requires that the person that we're supporting use these skills that they do not have. We call this a cognitive skill clash. The best thing that you can do is to try to foresee that they're going to need these skills and have a proactive conversation with them ahead of time, though that's not always possible. You can also utilize visuals. So if I'm in a situation with a client and we need to make a plan, I want to be writing things down. We've already talked about how visuals help with so many cognitive skills and planning is one of the big ones. By having things written out in some form, my brain no longer has to worry about manipulating the information, keeping track 
lack of it or forgetting it. I have it all right there in front of me and I can reference it as many times as I need. The visual not only helps with actually creating a plan, it also helps us to remember it later. So we might be able to use it as a reference when the time comes. So again, try to think of how many times throughout the day you're requiring the person that you're working with to engage in abstract planning. By understanding how often you're doing it, you can plan ahead and put in some other kind of support. Thanks for watching our video. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below. And if you're on Facebook, you can like our page on Facebook. Thanks for watching.